Uh, but to get started, I think we'll look at, as I said, some really interesting science women ladies. In science, some yeah. ladies in science. Have you heard of Heidi Lamar? No. Mm. No. And a lot of people haven't. Uh, and a lot of people who would know who she is know her as an actress and a model. Oh. Um, and she, there was a lot of controversy. She appeared in a film um, called Ecstasy, a German film, mm. in 1933. She appeared nude in the film, and there was a lot of controversy oh. about this. It was the 30s. Yeah. So obviously, that was like, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> um, and the t- problem with her, and I have a picture of her here, and you can kind of nearly see it to an extent. She was stunning, oh. absolutely stunning. Very but much of the time as very, well, like yeah, very glamorous. Torties, glamorous Hollywood yeah. sort of look. And But the problem was, as it has happened for a lot of women with stuff like this over the years, her looks kind of overshadowed everything else. Mm. And it was one of those things where people remember her for that. Okay. Remember her for being this absolute stunner and she was a great actress and yeah. she was a model like, and oh, all this stuff. She did science. Yeah. But she was so pretty. <laughs> but she did amazing stuff in science. Um as is, as I said, definitely more than a pretty face. Yeah. Um, herself and uh, a person she worked with, George Af- Af- mm. <laughs> Anthiel. An- Anthiel? I can, um, Good how name. would you pronounce that name? Anthiel. 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 It's a very interesting name. But anyway, her and George developed a radio guidance system. <clears throat> yeah. And the technology that's used there has been used in multiple other things from the phone you're using now to Wi-Fi. Um, no way. It was a massively important and influential thing. Yeah. And like it took a long time for her to be really recognised for it. Now she has been in 2014. She was inducted into the invent the National Inventors Hall of Fame. Oh, brilliant! So she has gotten the recognition now. Yeah. But like, that's a huge. That's massive. Thing. And I mean, the worst part is like I I mean. I wa- I've watched a lot of movies from like the 1930s, 40s, 50s because I love that style and yet I still didn't know her. Yeah. <laughs> so like I like science and I hadn't heard of her and I like those style movies that I still hadn't heard of her. So it's, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, like that, and, but I think that's the thing. I think the problem is there's a lot of, and as we go through this we'll find out more about it, there's a lot of women who've done amazing things mm. in science and sure. we don't know about them. Sure, um, Ayan Balak who is in The Big Bang Theory and she's oh, Blossom. Yes, yeah. um, <coughs> she, like, they, she was doing a red, uh, red carpet and um, they were saying, <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there's, they asked some questions about it. It's like, oh, like made a joke about um, uh, physicists and she mm. was like, I am a physicist, I have a PhD mm. in, uh, what is this, in like rocket, literally rocket science. Yeah. And there's like, I like kind of making a joke because she was a girl and she was working in this industry and all this. She was like, no, I was a kid actress. Then I stopped being a kid actress. Then I went and went to college, did my PhD, did everything. And she's like, yeah, I'm going to go back to to acting for another little while. And it's just that assumption that's just ingrained. It's so weird. But like her response was unreal. She just really shot them down. Like, excuse me. (laughs) Who does she play in it? Um, it's, um uh, Sheldon's girlfriend. Oh, Amy. Amy. No, um, that's yeah. Uh, no, that's it's Amy. Oh yeah, who's the blonde one? Bridget. Bernadette. No, Bernadette. Sorry. Yeah, also, I, Bridget, I know. Yeah, I know. I'm a big man theory. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and the funny thing is, she's a biologist in the show. Yeah. You think they would have like you know maybe cast? I was, I yeah. thought that's not acting, is it? Yeah. <laughs> You're basically just playing yourself. Yeah. It's not really acting. <laughs> like uh, offering her the roles. Like, oh, do you want to be a physicist in that? Like, nah, I do that anyway. Mm. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, that's a really good point. Like yeah. it's, I think that was probably what it was. I think if one of the lads had have said that they were also a physicist or something, yeah. people would or have just it would have been, oh, okay. would have been already well known. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It would have been known. And I think it was known amongst fans of the show. Yeah. Because I know, um, like I'd heard that, that she was, she was a scientist herself. And yeah. I remember seeing like, because uh, when that show first came out, I was in love with it. Like yeah. I binged that show. <laughs> um uh, kind of because it was one of the first shows on TV, that and the IT crowd, that I kind of had the IT, the IT crowd. If anybody hasn't seen it and you're into geeky or it's stuff like so that, funny. watch the IT crowd. Chris O'Dowd, man. Oh my god, it's so <laughs> and uh, Richard Iowadi. Yeah, I, I, I can always, never pronounce his last name. I, I think it's Iowadi. I think it is. Yeah, um, brilliant, absolutely, so just cool. fantastic. Sure. And you both can't, the pair of them and um, together and not together, they're just hilarious. Yeah. Brilliant, yeah. absolutely brilliant. If you haven't seen it, watch it. That's that's a good geeky recommendation. Yeah, I definitely. Suppose. Definitely watch that show. Um, but Sorry. Uh, what was I going to say about... Yeah, but those shows kind of came around at a time when I think the whole... Like now, the whole geek culture and stuff like that mm. is... And sciencey stuff and all has become really popular and mm. it's becoming more popular. Yeah. Which is great. 
But I think at the time when those kind of shows came around, like the Avengers films weren't a, hadn't come out, and like, yeah, comic book things hadn't become such a big money maker and all this stuff. So it was just something that was like, oh look, a TV show that has people in it who are into the same kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's a little bit less weird now. <laughs> like, it was so cool. Like, yeah. Those shows are great. They're How so did we funny. get on the talk? <laughs> <laughs> May and Balak. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, go watch. Uh, definitely. The IT crowd. Uh, the IT crowd, especially if you're a bit disillusioned with Big Bang Theory, because I know a lot of people are now. Yeah. Over time, people have gotten a bit kind of, like, soured on it and stuff. Yeah. And fair enough. But if you are if you like that idea of something that kind of, like, embraces geek culture a little mm. bit, and that did it before it was really popular to embrace geek culture so much. Definitely <laughs> give that a watch. So <clears throat> it is. And it's, I find anybody you mention it to when you're talking about it starts laughing like that yeah. because stuff starts coming back to them. <laughs> it's just that kind of a show. I think I've watched the whole thing start to finish more, it's, it, more times than I care to remember. Mm. It's, it's, it's good. It's brilliant if you're not a big fan of flying, actually. Um, I, yeah, because like I have really bad anxiety. It's not so much a fear of flying. It's just I I get anxious. And then by the time I'm boarding the plane, I've accepted my death. <laughs> I've just been like, I had a good one. Like, that's it. And I'm not like I, I, I don't have panic attacks on the plane or anything like that. I'm very calm because I know I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm just at peace. And I just downloaded um, when I was going to Berlin, I, I downloaded like six or seven episodes of it <laughs> and binged it. I was never happier and I was like, oh, look, I made it. And I got to watch the IT crowd. Great. <laughs> <laughs> but back uh, to the female well, scientist. Back to the female scientist. Um, you mentioned Marie Curie mm-hmm. at the start. <clears throat> well, her daughter continued in her... Yeah. Because it was obviously Marie Curie and her husband, Pierre, yeah. worked together on a lot of stuff and her daughter followed in her footsteps and worked with her husband yeah. and actually herself won a Nobel Prize. <laughs> Good. So, like, she kind of kept that going and it was in uh, radioactivity that she continued to kind of study in and stuff. So she definitely kept the family tradition sort of going. Was she protected? Was she protected? Around the radio... radio. Oh, well, at that point, I'd say, yeah, there was a lot more knowledge of, like, yeah, maybe you shouldn't be so <laughs> handsy with this stuff. Like, Just put in your face. <laughs> but obviously, Marie Curie herself, um, mm. her reputation is precedes her. Yes. Everybody, I think, even if you don't really know... My, my memories of Marie Curie, the first time I'd heard of her, was actually Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Really? There's an episode of Sabrina the Teenage Witch where they bring uh, <gasps> Marie and is Pierre. That, yeah. Zelda brings them back. Yeah, she brings them into back, modern time, yeah. sort of time travel, whatever you want to call it. And um, she's in that episode, and I just remember the whole time she always refers to him as Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> she spits every time she fucking <laughs> say, says his name. Yeah, and really, really funny. That was my first knowledge of like, oh, who's this Marie Curie person? Yeah. Oh, she's actually a real person. Yeah. Um, but obviously, she's she was uh, the first woman to be awarded a Nobel Prize. Mm-hmm. Um, she's the only person to have won a, mo- a, no- a mobile, mobile prize, <laughs> a Nobel Prize in two different sciences, two different disciplines. Oh, wow. Yeah, no one else has done that. Um, and that's only person, not only woman. She's yeah, the only person only to person. have done it. Uh, the first one, she uh, was a shared Nobel Prize in physics in 1903 that she shared with her husband. <laughs> but the second one, uh, it was her husband and another colleague, and but the second one was won in chemistry and she won that by herself in 1911. Good so stuff. that was completely her own stuff, like that was separate. <clears throat> so that's fantastic that's amazing the fact that she like she has two she's the only person <laughs> with two in two different disciplines yeah and especially at the time that the second one she'd gone and done it by herself yeah you know like that's amazing what a absolutely gal absolutely incredible um, <clears throat> uh, Annie Easley mm-hmm. and I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing her surname correctly but it, me and surnames <laughs> um, it, trailblazer for two reasons mm-hmm. um, female and also African American um, she was an African-American computer scientist, <coughs> a mathematician and a rocket scientist working for NASA. Nice. Mm. And as this was back in the 50s. So yeah. the fact oh, that she was big, African-American big was also a big deal. Yeah. Um, so, as I said, a trailblazer for two reasons. Yeah. Here. Um, she was one of only four African-Americans that were working with, in a group of 2,500. So, like, that's oh how small this was. So, the fact that she was one of only four African Americans in a group of two and a half thousand and she was female. Yeah. Um, says an awful lot. And she was a leading team member. Good stuff. So, like, this was, like, really, really big. And this would have been not just before, but <clears throat> a little over 10 years before the moon landing. So, oh, yeah. Quite the time to be a part of NASA as well. <laughs> that's the thing. If you're going to be part of NASA, that's, like, a, a pretty big time to do it. Yeah. Uh, but I think that kind of stuff is unreal and people like that uh, I think are f- amazing you know mm. where she had like two massive 
roadblocks yeah that should have stopped her mm. that anybody else probably would have either one of those roadblocks yeah. could well have stopped them yeah and she didn't let us stop her she oh. went on to be a you know a, a team leader essentially working it, on a project in NASA it's inspirational like it is and I mean I think I've said it there Don't a couple of times up. but to drive that home to be one of only four African Americans on a team of 2,500 and to be female yes in the yes. 50s working in and that's like, like that's in the 50s like 50s was not a great time in America no so, so unreal absolutely unreal yeah. and definitely a name that should be remembered a lot more than it is definitely absolutely um, look at Florence Boscom, <coughs> Boscom, excuse me, as well. Mm-hmm. Um, one of these people that, again, I don't think many people's names, many people that name would that would kind of ring a bell. Mm-hmm. I know it didn't for me. Yeah. Um, well known in geology, because um, early on she was, she got into geology very early when the field wasn't seen as being as kind of big a deal as it was. Mm-hmm. Um, she was the first woman hired by the United States Geology Survey. Mm-hmm. <coughs> um, she was also one of the first women ever to earn a master's degree. Um, and only the second to earn an American PhD in that field. What? Mm. Holy moly. Yeah. As I said, these are names that should be just the like... Common knowledge. Yeah. They should be huge. Like a hu- household na- name. Na- mm. <gasps> name. That's the, that's the one. It, absolutely. No, absolutely. They should be, you know, absolutely should be household names. Yeah. And they're not. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's again, I think it just speaks to the um, the overall feeling with of the time definitely mm. and even it prevails a little bit today and you spoke about it in your interview which we'll get to in a few minutes mm. um where it's like it's they're not seen as roles that women would get into mm. you know these are me- they're men's jobs you know yeah, that kind of yeah. thing like they're seen that way and yeah. i think it's it, it's silly mm. to be in 2019 and to still have that mentality like mm. i mean what exactly is a boy's job like yeah. i mean it's oh, it's just stupid now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. Absolutely is. Um, another one here, um, Mary Leakey. Uh, really one I'm hoping I'm saying right. Uh, she was a British paleontologist. She oh, uh, discovered, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, she actually discovered an early human ancestor. Oh, cool. Um, an, an ape. Uh, I'm gonna definitely going to get this wrong, called Proconsul. Um, That's right. Yeah, I think, I think I'm saying that right. Yeah. Um, but she was she discovered a lot of fossils over the course of her mm-hmm. career. Uh, discovered fifteen new species <coughs> and new genuses over the genuses. Is that the plural <laughs> of genus? Um, genuses, is, is, but like fantastic. Like that's yeah. you know, some big accomplishments. Definitely, because everything I love I love fossils and things like that, and even dinosaur skeletons. It's fascinating because mm. I mean it's all well and good. It's one of those things that you have to stop yourself when you're seeing it. Like you know, it's all well and good seeing the the T Rex skeleton, and you're just like cool. But then we're just like, this is like a kajillion years old. Yeah. That <coughs> we weren't always here. We probably won't always be here. Yeah. This because we're going to live create here. AI to follow us up and yeah. destroy us. All. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it is something that you have to remember when you when fossils are discovered. Like how mm. much they are going to mean to oh, research yeah. and what is it the missing link. Yeah. Still, <laughs> still missing. It's still missing. Does it even exist? Yeah. <laughs> um, but another one talking in that same field mm-hmm. uh, with kind of paleontology and uh, I suppose geology as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Mary Anning. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> she pretty. I, I actually I'm on the website. I'm looking at the minute for the information on her. Is a website called um, Factony, oh. and I want to read the little blurb they wrote on her because it's actually a really nice little story. Yeah. Um, so Mary was in a, it was still a curious eleven year old when she discovered her first fossil. Oh my god! Um, her brother had dismissed it as a crocodile, <laughs> and it turned out to be an ichthyosaurus, <gasps> which is an aquatic dinosaur. Yeah. Um, and that's amazing. Yeah. Like she just came across this aquatic dinosaur that her brother had just gone, ah, leave it, it's a crocodile. <laughs> I love that. Unreal. Uh, and what's amazing about her is all these other scientists, as incredible as they are and mm. as incredible as the accomplishments they have behind them are, you know, they worked for NASA or mm. they went and got degrees and PhDs and all this stuff. She taught herself anatomy, geology, paleontology and scientific illustration. Oh, my God. And discovered hundreds of fossils. How? Up to 200, from up to 200 million years ago. Now, put that into, like, we just talked about this woman a few minutes ago, and I'm not trying to compare people. Yeah. But it was amazing that she had discovered 15 new species and all this stuff. But the fact that this woman had taught herself all of these different disciplines and discovered hundreds of fossils, some of which were up to 200 million years old. Wow. That's unreal. I, I, I'm i kind of dumbfounded. <laughs> it's mind-blown. Yeah. It is absolutely mind-blown. 
she was a special lady. Really, really was. Like, a special human being. Like, that's yeah. just... To go and do that. Like, I mean, to most ha- people... To have that self-motivation. Yeah. <laughs> most people can't motivate themselves to learn one thing. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like, I mean, how long have I been trying to motivate myself to learn a language and I haven't done it yet? I was yet. about to say, like, my school tried for <laughs> six years to get French into me and still not. Mm. <laughs> but this person went out and she, as I said, again, taught herself anatomy, geology, paleontology and scientific illustration. And it's not like these are exactly easy things to no. learn. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> like, these are, you know... Each one of those is a discipline in and of yeah, itself. Yeah, very complex. And I mean, you can say, okay, maybe she didn't like master them all. Fair enough. But obviously she had to have enough had a of an massive understanding. understanding of all of them, enough yeah. that she could identify these yeah. fo- fossils and discovered so many of them. Jeez. Like, that's, that's just so crazy. Real. Um, we might leave it with this last one because um, we're the time is flying by. Um, Sally Ride. This one, again, trailblazer for two, two reasons. Um, first American woman to fly in space. Nice. But actually three reasons, and I'll get to the third one in a minute. Uh, that was back in 1983. Um, it was also later discovered because her partner talked about it later on after she died. She was also the first LGBT person in space. No way. The very first, back in 1983. She never oh, came wow. out during her life, as far as I can figure out. Yeah. Um, but her after her death, her partner uh, talked about their relationship and confirmed that they were actually a couple. Oh. And I suppose maybe it was the time that was in it or something. She yeah. couldn't really come out and... <clears throat> and speak about it yeah um, but on top of all of that she still to this day holds the record for being the youngest person to ever go into space no way how old was she um, it doesn't say <laughs> <laughs> you'd imagine the article here would say yeah. um, but she was young, the youngest person to go into space and to, to, like those three things yeah. like the first woman in space the first LGBT person in space yeah. and the youngest person to ever go into space wow that is so cool mm. and she's a gal yeah and there you go like that's the kind of thing it's like it's these people should be more well yeah, known and I mean like it is it's, it's fun facts like that that mm. you want that are easy to remember and yeah. easy to just be thrown around the internet kind of thing that it's not like it's something really complicated and hard to remember it's if oh I mean like right, be honest here right we went through about what five or six people there mm. how many of them did you know before the names came out one Marie Curie <laughs> yeah the only other one I kind of knew was I knew her daughter had con- continued yes, in science yeah, as well, no, but when, I didn't know yeah. her by name. But I and I'd forgotten. Mm. I'd only remembered <clears> when I saw Curie again. I was like, oh yeah, and yeah. like that was probably as an aside in my history book. I'm like, oh, and her daughter was great too. <laughs> yeah, and it's like it's okay. Obviously, what um, Marie Curie. Curie and yet, did like, was incredible but. but you always have to wonder well this is probably me just being cynical did she get as much recognition because her husband was also up there like and it was kind of the two of them together possible and she kind of surpassed him a little bit it's possible but then and at the same time she's two Nobel Prizes to her name one of which she was nothing to do with so obviously either way she blazed her own trail anyway oh oh god 100% yeah but I'm just saying that is it was it because her name was cropping up the same in the same places that her husband was? That's why oh, she's possible, more household. Yeah. Whereas the other ones, the their husband or partner or whatever wasn't in the same field and getting all this recognition yeah. based on the just based on the decades as well. It's quite possible. Mm. Uh, I mean, no, that's just me just throwing my no, no, cynicism I, into there. But it, no, like, I think you're right. The question and not to take away from anything she did because she is amazing. But so yeah. were all these. I mean. You, see, to really put it into perspective, mm. and as you said, not to take away from anything she did, we yeah. couldn't possibly take away from anything she did exactly. because her stuff was so incredible. Yeah. But it shows how important and how like earth shattering her work was. Yeah. That of all these women who've done all these incredible things, yeah. even though we haven't heard of most of them and it's yeah. been so hard to have heard of most of these people, yeah. we've heard of her. Yeah. You know, like at least somebody from that yeah. list has kind of come through. Yeah. And I mean, you know, we haven't gone through every single woman who's ever no. done stuff in science. We'd be here longer than we could do episodes of, yeah. on it. Um, but it shows how amazing her work still was that even though her peers maybe we hadn't heard of and mm. we don't hear of, sadly, yeah. we heard of her. Yeah. You know, That's which is something. pretty amazing. Yeah. Oh. But ho- and hopefully this is like a, a dying thing and maybe in a few years time people will be more familiar with these names. Hopefully. Yeah. And I mean, I think it's why, sadly, we do still need organisations like WITS. Yeah. And we still need days like, uh, well, yesterday. Yeah. Um, the, International day of, the International Day of Women and Girls in Science. Yeah. Um, we still need that. And As you kind of like little, <clears throat> just like your little poker to mm. be like, hey, still an issue. And it like... 
that's one thing that, that is kind of forgotten because we like society is moving on a great deal, mm-hmm. but it's not there yet that's yeah. why you still like like that in any kind of sense that's why you still have pride parades that's why you have international women's day because we're not there yet yeah. we still need these kind of things and I, and today sorry yesterday mm. it's great to have something you know something like this in that i think it's obviously you've got these other you know much larger events that mm-hmm. are much more publicized to talk about different awarenesses for different things yeah i don't think many people know yet that this is a thing yeah you know like i think because you know not not to take away from it at all but everybody knows what pride is yeah. you know everybody has heard of that and knows what that is yeah. again not to take away from that in the yeah. slightest but i don't think very many people know of this yeah i don't think very many i think i say people probably assume there's a day yeah. of women in science but a lot of people yeah. don't know for a fact that there is i didn't no <laughs> i i honestly didn't either until i started doing research on it and yeah i found oh this is really cool yeah and a little thing just we're, we are going to get on to your interview now yeah but there's a little thing i really like about it is the fact that they went to the even though it's not the catchiest name in the world <laughs> they went for actually saying women and girls in science yeah i think it is so important like with anything yeah. getting into it young Exactly. Getting girls interested in it yeah. and kind of going, look, it's it's something that you can get into when you're still in school. Get started, exactly. learn now. I, that's what I was about to say. It's something that should be drilled into you in school. And again, in the interview, I'll talk about my experiences with that kind of stuff in school. And it wasn't great because mm. I went to an all-girls school, which yeah. sucked. <laughs> and a lot I, of lost opportunities, I think. But I think, that could have just been my, my own experience. Yeah, yeah, oh, absolutely. And I know what my school, um, my school might have been an anomaly, but mm. the our science classes were mostly girls. Yeah. Um, you which, see that a lot in mixed schools. Yeah, it was mostly girls. Yeah. Um, I think, because I did biology. Same. And biology was, that's all. I think biology seems to be the one that appeals to, has always seemed to have, draw more female students yeah. than the other two. Um, but even with the other two. Uh, it was the same with my maths classes as well, actually. It was mostly girls. Yeah. Like in the higher level maths classes. You so, see that, yeah. actually, in statistics, you see that a lot, actually, just mm. in general. Um, but it is interesting. And it should correlate to the workplace, but it doesn't seem to. Nope. You know? Um But as I said, Yet. you'll get into all that stuff uh, <laughs> in the interview yeah. um, with Julie, after, which we're going to go to um, we'll go to now in a few minutes. But uh, a lot of these facts, as I said, go, go look it up online. There's so many more people. Yeah. There's so many more interesting so people interesting. that you should really look into and know who they are. And it's really encouraging as yeah. well. Absolutely, because yeah. it's nothing. If anything, I think for me, and I think we all we'd all have different people, but for me, I think the person who was like by far for me the most ins- inspiring was um, Annie uh, Isley. Yeah, Isley, Isley. No, um, I agree. Because just the the barrier she broke down, and how and the barrier she broke down, and when she did it, when she like, did it, fifty five. Holy crap! Like that. Nineteen fifty-five. The only one of one of the only females and one of the only African Americans on a team of two and a half thousand people. That's astounding! Like she's amazing. Yeah, she's she's someone who should be. Yeah. In your history book, should be and much stuff. bigger. And I, I know in um, in the US, I think it's this month is Black History Month. Yes, yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Um, and she's somebody that I think definitely should be should highlighted be yeah. for, you know, when you're talking about people like that who broke barriers, not just yeah. for women, but yeah. for African-Americans. Yeah. It's huge. It's a 